Welcome back to this video in the lesson about the basics of a net element method using the graded residual method. We are going to present in this video the second example we have. It's an example about a bar under its own weight, uh, or actually it can be subject to not just gravitational field, it can be subject to any field. Uh, we also added an end force here to see how we can handle uh, such a case where both the distributed force and the concentrated force are uh, subject uh, are um, uh, present in the problem. First, we're going to handle the problem using only two elements. Uh, so I'm going to divide this bar into two parts, uh, the BD and DC. Uh, the bar is fixed from the left hand side, so we have uh, UB equals to zero. Now we get the first equation for the first element uh, from uh, the um, equations, uh, the element equations as we have uh, derived them earlier. Notice here that uh, the vector now f1 and f2 are there. We can see them. This can be obtained easily by uh, integrating n1 and n2 <coughs> since the field is constant. So we will just be integrating uh, n1 and n2 over the length of the element you will get one half in both uh, cases. The second uh, element will have a similar equation, but uh, with a different concentrated force vector. Here you have the reaction force, while here you have the end force applied with a negative sign because uh, it's in the negative direction. The following step will be, of course, assembling the whole system. We get the three equations and three unknowns. Everything is shown here. Uh, and uh, now we can apply the boundary condition for which UB is equal to zero. When we apply the boundary condition, we get the set of primary equations uh, where UB and UC are the variables we have, <coughs> while the secondary or the auxiliary equations will only contain R. Uh, when we substitute UB and UC, we'll just substitute and get the value of R, which is the reaction force. Solving this set of equation will just mean that we will invert the matrix and multiply it on the right hand side to obtain the values of UD and UC. Here you get right away UC, uh, UD, which are exactly the same values you're going to get if you solve this problem uh, uh, using mechanics of material methods. Uh, so actually, again, the, the, the finite element model of the bars here is giving the exact solution. If we use UD and UC in the auxiliary equation, you've got the reaction, which is again equal to the exact value of the reaction we uh, would have got from the uh, uh, mechanics of the team. Now let's go further and divide the bar into four elements instead of two. So now we will have five nodes. We will call them 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And each element will have a length of L over 4. Still the same field, the same concentrated and force. Uh, so the general element equation will look like this. Uh, again, nothing really changed. Only when you have an element with a concentrated force, you would replace P1I and P2I with the relevant force. For example, here the first element will have R instead of P1 and 0 instead of P2, while the last element will have 0 instead of P1 and minus P instead of P2. We will go and uh, now assemble the, equation, uh, the equations. We have now the system matrix is a 5 by 5 matrix with uh, uh, the same shape that we expected all 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, then we add a 1 here, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, then we add a 1 here, minus 1, minus, and so on. So even if you extend this to any number of elements, you will still get the same uh, value, the same. Uh, similarly, we will get uh, the same thing in the generalized force vector on this side, and the concentrated forces will just add extra zeros for 2, 3, and 4 since there are no concentrated forces at these points. Now we have two sets of equations. The primary set of equations will include the four variables, the four unknowns, U2, U3, U4, U5, while U1 is equal to zero and it's the known one, 
associated with the reaction. Here you get this primary equation and the auxiliary uh, equation or the secondary equation. Uh, if you solve this, you will get U2, U3, U4, U5 in this form. You can again check that the middle point, which is U3 here, uh, has the exact value we can get from uh, the mechanics of material or the same value we got using only two elements. But now we have more information about the inside points here, two and four, uh, which, which we, was not present in the previous part of the example. Uh, again, if you use this uh, into the auxiliary equation, you will get the reaction force exactly as the mechanics of material. So, uh, now we can see that increasing the number of elements will not really give us better solution for the central point and the end point. However, it will give us more information uh, about what's happening inside the uh, structure, <coughs> which can be useful in certain problems. Now uh, we uh, uh, We'll move to the next example in the coming uh, video, which is a compound bar fixed at both ends, which is uh, actually a statically indeterminate structure, and we see how the finite element method handles such problems.